Hello, welcome to part two of Frogger. So what I made so far in part one, if you could believe it, I don't know, it's all I got so far was a rectangle that I can move around the screen by pressing the arrow keys. And now what I want to do is add some cars. So I want to add the cars that are moving across, um, where, which I have to avoid. So what I want to do is first, I already have a car tab and hopefully, I'm hoping, boy am I hoping, that all the work we did to figure out this rectangle thing and this frog thing will pay off when it comes time to program the car and it's going to be really simple. So let's just first do one car. Eventually I'm gonna need an array, I'm gonna have multiple cars, but let's just have one car. And I'm gonna say car equals new car and I'm gonna put the car at zero. It's gonna start at zero and it's going to be, it's Y is going to be height minus grid times two and its size is also just going to be grid. Now the car and the truck could have a variable. So, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it, uh, at, this is having the car start at the bottom, uh, two, row, two rows up from the bottom, and having its width be the side of the grid, and its height being two. No, I want its width, if it's a truck, it's gonna be longer. So I'm gonna have it be a little bit wider just to try that out. And its height be just the grid. Then I'm going to say, uh, car.show, and let's just see if we can see the car. Now, the car is not showing. Hmm, what if, what if I dare have the car, no, this is a bad idea, because ultimately, on some level, we're probably gonna be drawing the cars in different ways. Let's just have the car extend, I was thinking about having the car extend frog, and I would inherit the show function, but I'm actually just going to leave that here and I'm going to make the car like a slightly different color just for right now. Uh, and I'm going to, I need to have the same exact constructor basically, uh, except I'm going to include a, a height. And so this now is the car. So if I run this, we should see, okay, what happened here? Ah, whoops, width, height, there we go. Uh, what did I get wrong? Ah, whoops, it's just the way that I'm drawing it. There we go, that was just a little bug. And now, there we go. So there is the truck. There is the truck, or the car. Now what I need is for the car to have maybe an update function, and the car should also have its own variable called speed. So let's just set the speed equal to two. So this is one of the wonderful things about inheritance is I can inherit all of the properties from rectangle and then add my own. So the car is also gonna have a speed, and then speed is going to say x equals x plus, update is gonna say x equals x plus speed. So I'm going to say uh, car update, and now we have the car moving. Yay, and I can go past it as it moves by. Now, when the car goes off, I probably want it to re-enter. So what I probably, in update, I'm gonna say if x is greater than width, then x equals negative height, never negative width. So I want it to start off the screen and re-enter. So what I mean by this is when the car's x, which is its left side, gets past the right side, then it should re-emerge on the other side. And I might wanna, you know, maybe have that be more of a delay or something, so I could like, you know, maybe if it's, you know, further off the screen, I could use w, uh, I could, actually, I'd probably, let me just use the grid size, which is probably, um, oh, but that I definitely want to do uh, negative W, uh, you know, negative W minus grid. There's just so many ways I could do this, <laughs> but I just want it to have a little bit of buffer. So it's got to go more than just width, and then it re-enters. So you can see, now I've got, look at this, we're moving along now. We've got the car moving. So what do I need? I need to have multiple cars. Okay, so let's just think, I could use an array list, which allows me to have a flexible amount of cars, but I, for simplicity, I think I'm just gonna have a fixed amount. So I'm gonna say car equals cars. Cars index zero is that new car, and cars index zero show, and cars index zero update. I wanna make sure that just works. What did I get wrong? Uh, I didn't initialize the array. Cars equals new car with you know, 100 cars. So let's say there's gonna, well there's not gonna be, let's just, let's go look at Frogger for a second. 
What's a reasonable number of cars? So you can see there's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two. There's some configuration, but that's three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, what a lovely number. Let's have, oh, uh, no, no, that's actually 12, but whatever. <laughs> Let's just have 10. 10's a nice round number. Right now there's only one car, okay. Now what I need to do is, okay, so how many, um, how many rows of cars? Let's say I have 10 cars and I have five rows. That would give me two cars per row. I mean, this is sort of all arbitrary making this up, but let's, let's think about how many rows there are. So I'm going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than, let's just say there are going to be three rows for right now i plus plus. So I'm going to say row equals zero. Row is less than three. Row plus plus. I almost kind of want to, maybe I should do this much more manually. Let's do this. Let's configure this manually. Let's just say I'm going to do, um, let's keep track of an index which is zero. Then this is going to be the first row. I'm going to put three cars in the first row. So the three cars, they need a starting x location. Uh, x uh, equals uh, uh, i times 100 plus 50. So what I want to do is arbitrarily space them out. And let's just say those are, there's only going to be three cars right now. There's only going to be three cars. You'll see where I'm going in a second. So I'm going to... And you know what, I can actually, I forget, I can use this enhanced loop, which is like a for each loop, for every car in cars. Car, car show, car update. So this is a nice way I could say, well, whatever amount of cars there are, show and update all of them. Okay, so now what I should have here is three. Now you can see I didn't do a very good job of spacing them out. So let's space them out more. I times 200. Uh, I don't know why I have this plus 50 there. I'll just take that out. Right. So now we can see there are, there's the bottom row, right? So I can, now that looks like really hard. That's probably too hard. So let's just have uh, two cars in this row and space them out by 300 pixels. Uh, and um, I just need to match that I only have two so far. There we go. So we can see that's one row. Yay! Yay! This is working. I got distracted by my own game. So let's now do, so I'm going to have to put a comment here. Oh, and the whole point of this is I wanted to do index. I want to keep track of the index. Boy, an array list might be easier here because what I'm going to do, this is row one. I'm doing this, and again, this could be optimized. I could do this less manually. I'm going to do row two which is now, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna also add two cars to row two. So now I have a total of four cars. Let me move this down here. And for row two, I'm going to add those cars, height minus grid times three, right? Because I need to go up another row. I wanna make these just square and they are separated by uh, 200 pixels. Uh, and let's take a look at this. Now, I probably want to offset that by some amount, so they look, and again, this could be random. And they're, oh, they're moving at the same speed. So each row should also get a different speed. And, and Radek in the chat is making a really great point, which is I should make an object which is just like a row or a car lane object, and it can keep track of its own cars and its position and speed. I'm gonna say that's like a refactoring thing that I'm gonna suggest maybe people do as a uh, exercise for after it, because I'm gonna keep things kind of simple here, but that is a really great suggestion. So one thing that I wanna do is give these a speed. So let's say for, also I'm gonna add a fourth argument here. So this has a speed of two, and this is gonna have a speed of 3.5. Uh, and so now the car should also get a fourth argument called speed, S. 
the car constructor should get a fifth argument. So I'm going to want to be initialized. So now also these cars, which are all in row one, have this particular speed. And these cars, which are all in row two, have a different speed. OK, let's run this now. And there we go. We can see this looks a bit more like Frogger. Let's see. Oh, right. Whether this is difficult or easy, I'm not sure. Let's add one more row. Row three. Let's put in uh, four cars. They're going to be their height is going to be one more spot on the grid up, and their speed is going to be uh, really slow. But um, they are not spaced out by as much. I'm just picking some random numbers. This is row three. And what did I mess up? Uh, so I have 2 plus 2 plus 4 is 8 cars total. There we go. So now I have, again, now I have a whole bunch of cars. And I, you know, again, I could also have them each have an image associated with them as their own animation. But is this playable? That's the question. Yeah. It looks like I made it. But have I actually, you know, so we've got a row of cars. I'm going to just keep three. But what I need to do, I've got one more feature I've got to add to this part, which is that I need to check that intersection thing. But guess what? I don't know why I spent the part one of this video's tutorial series on making Frogger doing the intersection, because I could have just waited now. But thank goodness we did that, because I have this function already. So what I want to do is now say here, if car intersects frog, or maybe I want to say frog intersects car, it doesn't matter. Frog and car both extend rectangle. Rectangle has in itself this convoluted, but it works, in, I wish we don't know that it works, I never tested it, intersects function. So now I could say if they intersect, then let me do something like, um, let me just print, let me just do a print line you know, game over or something. So now we should see, look, if I look down here in the console, oh. <laughs> so we have a problem here, which is you can see, I see the game over already, which is that it's actually intersecting when they're right on top, when it's, when they're right next to each other. And that's because I, that's because in my intersects function, I'm actually checking, right? Remember, I'm negating whether they're not overlapping. And so they shouldn't be overlapping if those edges are equal. And so I think if I add this in here, that should fix that problem. Oh, and it's less than or equal, uh, not equal less than, less than or equal. OK. All right, game is not over. OK, so now let's see if I can do this. Can I get through them? I did it. I saw no game over down here. Now let's make sure the intersect function is working. Game over, game over. Aha! So we have actually, what do I want to do? Let's, let's actually just have, if instead of game over, let's, um, let's just reset. Let's call a, um, let's call a function called a reset game. And I'm going to make that function, I'm going to just put it up here at the top. Reset game. And what I'm going to do is, and I think I'm just going to just reset the frog's location. Uh, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to put this here. I'm going to make a new frog object, and then I'll just call reset game here. So I could be more thoughtful about this. There might be a lot of other things. You know, ultimately, I'm not really doing lives or levels, and this isn't really a reset game. But one thing you can notice here, if there are a bunch of things that you want to reset that happen when the game starts, but then also happen later when you make when something happens, like the, the frog and the car collide. I can have a separate function that does all that, call that both in setup and also down here. So let's see now if I can make it through. Not too hard to play, actually. Let me run it again and mess up. Yeah, so you can see if I mess up, it just puts me back at the beginning. So we've got, we've got the basics of Frogger now, part two done. I'm going to end this part two. And in the second part, I'm going to add the logs. The third part, that is, I'm going to add the logs at the top that instead of avoiding, 
the frog has to actually jump onto and, and ends up sticking to, okay? Thanks for keeping going with me. <laughs> I guess there will be a third part to this, okay.